So today we're going to talk about Beatrice, Princess Beatrice, uh, Andrew's uh, oldest daughter. Uh, I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, it's a big help if you would. Thank you if you do. And uh, But thank you all anyway, just for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, yeah, Princess Beatrice, you know, during, um, I guess it was the television interview that Andrew gave about uh, his uh, non-involvement, he says, with uh, Virginia Roberts Giffrey, uh, that uh, he couldn't have been at one of the places they said he was going to be with her having sex because he was at a birthday party for his daughter uh, at, um, I don't know, Chuck E. Cheese, maybe? I don't know, but somewhere. And uh, so uh, the question is... You know, will she testify? Will she actually, you know, go in front of a jury and testify? You know, she spent a lot of time in New York. She's not unfamiliar with the United States. She is considered a working royal, I believe. So, what, can she be made to testify? Would she testify? Would she lie? Let's ask a few questions and see. Of course, I wikied her. So here's what I know about Beatrice. So in 1988, Princess Beatrice Elizabeth Mary was born at 8.18 p.m. on August 8th, and uh, she's a Leo. Uh, she was born at the Portland Hospital, and she's the first child of Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, and the fifth grandchild of Queen Elizabeth II. She was baptized in the Chapel Royal at St. James Palace. Her name was an unexpected choice and not announced until two weeks after her birth. Um, in 1991, Beatrice began her early education at the independent Upton House School in Windsor. Then she attended an independent Coworth Park School, the independent Coworth Park School. Now, in 1975, she's seven years old, and she was diagnosed with dyslexia. Her parents divorced amicably with joint custody, and she frequently traveled abroad with them. Seven years old, 1995. Now, in 2000 to 2007, Beatrice continued her education at the independent school, uh, St. George's uh, Ascot, uh, St. George's School in Ascot. I hope this is interesting to you, if you're Brits, um, and maybe everybody. Um, in 2002, though, the 14-year-old princess visited with HIV uh, children, uh, children with HIV in Russia, and in Britain, uh, she supported a literacy project for primary school children with learning difficulties in the Teenage Cancer Trust. All good stuff. Now, in 2005, at the age 17, Beatrice went public with her dyslexia diagnosis. I wonder if I have that. I've never been diagnosed. Am I too old to get diagnosed? I don't know. But in 2006, 18-year-old Beatrice celebrated her birthday at a masked ball at Windsor. Man. Uh, she was briefly in a relationship with an American whose uh, previous charge for assault and battery caused controversy, I imagine. And uh, she began a 10-year relationship, at the age of 18, began a 10-year relationship with a businessman. Uh, Beatrice used her position, and it didn't, I don't know who. Beatrice used her position to assist others through charity work with her mother through organization that the Duchess uh, supported, of course. And in 2008, Beatrice started a three-year course for a BA in history and history of ideas at Goldsmiths University of London. Uh, she volunteered as a sales assistant at volunteered as a sales assistant at Selfridge's department store. Pretty cool. Then worked at the Foreign Office's press office without pay and was interested in pursuing a career at the Financial Times website. Okay. Um, in 2009, 21-year-old Beatrice was the first member of the royal family to appear in a non-documentary film with a non-speaking role as an extra in The Young Victoria. Remember that, uh, Young Victoria? In 2010, to raise money for children in crisis, she became the first of the royal family to compete, to compete in the London Marathon. Wow, running out there with the rest of you. Now, 2011, the princess graduated, and uh, at the wedding of Prince William, her unusual, you'll remember this, fascinator hair adornment got much attention and derision from the public and, uh, and the media. Uh, the following month, it was auctioned for 81,000 pounds on eBay, and the proceeds, of course, went to two charities. Uh, at 
uh, in 2012, at the age of 24, she climbed Mount Blanc in aid of a charity. And in 2014, for a while, she was a paid intern at Sony Pictures. But she resigned after that hacking in, uh, incident that affected the company, if you remember that. Uh, 2015, she's 27 years old, and Beatrice decided to move to New York City. Good for her. And then in 2016, she visited Nepal, India, Bhutan on behalf of the Franks Family Foundation and a few, couple of other foundations and uh, with Richard Branson and his children and participated in a fundraising ch challenge which involved climbing Mount Etna. Now, in 2017, Beatrice had a full-time job splitting time between London and New York City. I just love that. And in 2018, Beatrice and Eduardo Mapoli uh, Mosey, I'm sure I pronounced his name incorrectly, uh, a property developer, are believed to have begun dating. And they attended the wedding of Lady Gabriella Windsor, her second uh, cousin uh, once removed. Now, in 2019, Beatrice attended a fundraising event in London uh, with Eduardo, uh, and he's a former British Olympian descended from Italian nobility. Cool. Uh, the BBC describes him as also a count, like his father, but the title is not officially recognized in Italy or in the UK, and the two became engaged in Italy. Their engagement was formally announced on the Duke of York's uh, website. Now, in 2020, the wedding, scheduled for uh, the Chapel Royal at St. James Place and with a private uh, reception at the Buckingham Palace uh, Gardens, was postponed uh, due to the pandemic. And the wedding was eventually held privately at the Royal Chapel of All Saints, Royal Lodge Windsor, and not publicly, publicly announced. Uh, her father walked her down the aisle. The wedding dress was a remodeled Norman Hartnell loaned to her by the Queen. And she wore the Queen Mary fringe tiara, I love that tiara, uh, that was worn by the Queen at her own wedding. And she has a four-year-old stepson, I didn't know this, from Eduardo's previous uh, relationship. Um, in 2021, Beatrice gave birth to Sienna Elizabeth Mopoli. Is that correct? I've got to look that up. But uh, Elizabeth, uh, Sienna Elizabeth Mopoli Mosey, that's a beautiful name, uh, at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. And that uh, baby is 11th in line to the throne, of course, because Beatrice is 10th in line at this moment. The princess is known as Beatrice of York, or no, Beatrice York, excuse me, Beatrice York, in professional life and as a VP of Partnerships and Strategy at Affinity. That's a software company. So now let's just ask the questions about if she's going to testify. That's what we all really want to know. So this Impressionist Tarot, these cards are everything that I've ever wanted in a set of cards except for the quality. And I'll tell you what I mean. The um, box is fantastic. It's a beautiful box. If you gave this as a gift or if you got it as a gift, you'd feel like, wow, somebody really put some thought into what they were uh, giving me. And the guidebook is very useful. It's a full color guidebook with very thoughtful uh, ideas as to the divination of the cards. And uh, the uh, the creators of this are Corinne Kenner and the artwork by Arturo Pica. And so what they've done is they've actually taken impressionists um, that you will know of and uh, and that you will see art in galleries and um, and use their art to make these cards. And, um, and so what they've they've taken the actual artwork um, and sometimes uh, Arturo Pica has added elements to the original art to help in the divination, or he may have blended a couple of uh, pieces of art uh, from one or two or uh, artists to uh, get to this uh, this work here. But they're gorgeous to use. I love them, and uh, I feel like this is just a good way to get the cards mixed up without creating too much damage to them. I mean, some folks like to kind of really handle the cards and bend them and break them you know, to uh, make them theirs. That's just not what I like to do. Uh, nothing wrong with that if that's what you like to do. But uh, this impression is tarot. I'm so happy with these cards. Okay, so Beatrice, Princess Beatrice. Very interesting person and accomplished. And um, that's great. I mean, that's something that her parents can be very proud of. And, um, and she married really well. So let's get into it. But first, you know what we're gonna do? Just a couple of seconds of meditation. There we go. It doesn't take much, just a little protection is, I mean, you just have to ask and we all have all these same abilities. So Princess Beatrice, Princess Beatrice, Sienna's her daughter, how beautiful. I guess, you know, we'll do a couple of three card draws before we really get into it. But I wanna know, you know, does she, let's start with this. Does she believe that her dad, um, 
is innocent of these charges. Three cards. Does she believe her dad's innocent of these, these charges? One, two, three. She's a grown woman. She's had lots of life experience now. Let's see. Uh, do, do you, does Beatrice believe her dad's innocent of these charges? The first card out of the rack is the Hierophant. So that's an interesting card to start with, the Hierophant. You know, the Hierophant re represents rules, laws, uh, government, the system that things are held, are uh, uh, worked through by. So this is most particularly government, and that's an interesting card to start out with. Does Beatrice uh, believe her dad is innocent, and the first card is the government? Hmm. The next card up is the five, six, seven, eight of uh, the Major Arcana, and this is, uh, uh, is this Star Nights or Secrets Being Revealed? Sorry, Star Nights, you know what, I'm gonna look in the box. I sure am, because uh, I don't recall this particular card, uh, what that one was. So we're coming up to it. You know it's gonna be, what is that, 18? Uh, 10, 15, 16, 18. Okay, we're almost there, hang in there. 10, 15, 15, 17, 8, the moon. The moon card, that's very good. Okay, so that's perfect. This moon card, okay, so the next card is secrets being revealed. Wow. Okay, so the first card is the government, secrets being revealed. And my question is, does she believe her dad's innocent? Hmm. And then the third card to come up for that is this 10 of wands, which is just being embattled. I mean, really having to carry a heavy load uh, up that hill. And it's interesting that this comes up as this uh, naked woman sort of covering herself in bed. You know what? I think she is, is believing the government. The, the first card of that, does Princess Beatrice believe her dad is innocent? We get the government, we get secrets being revealed, and we get this heavy load to push up the hill that's depicted by a naked woman on a bed looking a little uh, startled. So this kind of leans to me that she's she's giving the allegations of uh, credibility, lots of it. Wow, that's that's sad to have that realization about your dad, isn't it? Uh, so, Princess Beatrice, will she testify? This is not about her personally, but this is about the universe. Is is Princess Beatrice going to uh, going to testify uh, about this? And um, It'll be against her dad, probably, if he wasn't at that darn party. Will Princess Beatrice testify? And we're not going to ask if she'll tell the truth. We're not going to ask what she's going to say. I just want to know if she will be made to testify in this trial. Three cards. Okay. One, two, three. Just want to know from the universe, is she going to testify? I think that's interesting. First card. Oh, boy is the Six of Swords, and the Six of Swords is moving out of troubled water. Moving out of troubled water. That would kind of say to me that she's going to try to stay away from this if she can. see. Can you see the swords uh, right there uh, at this uh, bridge? The Six Swords, and the, and so moving out of troubled waters. Wow, the, the drawbridge has been raised. There's been a path cleared. Interesting. So there may be some way that she doesn't have to testify. Um, the um, next card for that is this Two of Wands. Okay, the Two of Wands is short-term uh, planning. Wands are actions, um, emotions, uh, ideas, plans, forward-moving. And uh, this uh, Two of Wands, this looks to me like uh, this little princess is about to leave the scene. Interesting. And the last card as to will she testify is uh, the Six of Wands, and the Six of Wands is victory. So... That's very interesting. I'm going to say that uh, she will not uh, testify. For some, whatever reason, she'll be moved out of uh, those troubled waters. Some sort of kind of a short-term plan is what's going to facilitate that. And uh, so she will be victorious in not having to testify, if I read those cards correctly. These are really slippery. That's interesting. I, don't, I haven't used these in a little bit, and I don't remember them being this slippery. Um, now let's ask if Princess Beatrice remembers if on the day that Andrew said that he was in fact at her um, um, birthday party, and I guess she was just a, a little one at the time, does she remember her father being at that specific birthday party that he mentions? 
Does she remember her father? Let me get these really shuffled up nicely. Princess Beatrice. Princess Beatrice, do you remember your father being at that specific birthday party that he mentions? Princess Beatrice, do you remember your father being at the specific birthday party that he says he was? One, two, three. Okay, so here we go. First card out of the rank. Okay, so this is the King of Wands. We're asking if she remembers her father being at that birthday party. We're showing a man in the middle of a congregation of a bunch of little girls here. Um, and he's on a platform. So this kind of seems to me uh, uh, as a memory could be a memory of her dad among the children. I'm just going to say that that's, that's what comes to mind. So that's the King of Wands. Our wands are actions, plans, a forward movement. The King of Wands is someone very much in control of those plans. But this seems to me to be a memory. This for me um, is like a memory of this uh, authoritative uh, person of, of, of planning, of plans, uh, in the middle of all these uh, youngsters. Uh, the next card was if she remembers him being at the specific uh, uh, party that he mentions uh, on that TV interview. Ah, so here we have the uh, Five of Wands. This is um, pointless arguing, kind of confusion, conflict. So I'm going to say, you know, if you're involved in this sort of a, a, an altercation, nothing is going to be clear. It's going to be confused, and you, then you've got to go in and kind of sort out who started this, what were you arguing about, what were you doing, you know. So this is conflict and confusion. And does, does Beatrice remember her father being at that uh, party? The last card, okay, this is uh, Temperance. So, yeah, this is uh, Princess Beatrice trying to weigh the evidence, trying to come to some sort of a clear balance about what was going on there. I'm going to say it's not particularly clear because I'm sure she had lots of birthday parties that her father attended. So, yeah. So this says to me again, the question is, does she remember him being at her birthday party? This seems to me to be a memory. King of Wands, King of Plans, up on a pedestal in front of a bunch of uh, little ballerinas here. Um, the uh, conflict and the confusion is in the center, and this for me is Beatrice trying to find a temperance, trying to find a balance, trying to find, you know get to the truth here. I'm going to say it's not clear at all that she remembers specifically, okay? And that could be a very, um, you know, valuable um, way to remember that. could be a very convenient way to remember it, and it could be um, absolutely the truth, you know? Now, let's uh, go on with Princess Beatrice personally. So, and her husband, Eduardo, what a beautiful name he has, and I hope they're a happy couple. But uh, let's see if the cards will let us know um, just a little bit about Princess Beatrice uh, personally, okay? In her professional and in her uh, marriage. I wanna know, number one, will her marriage be successful? Will Princess Beatrice's marriage be a successful endeavor now and forever, okay? Will Princess Beatrice's marriage last, you know, forever? First question for two questions of this full Celtic cross. Six cards to begin with. One, two, three, four. This card wanted to come out. Five and six. Okay, so Princess Beatrice's marriage, will this be a successful endeavor? You know, she lived through that... Uh, Divorce or her parents, which was a very successful divorce, as a matter of fact. The signifier card for that, ah, fool's journey. So starting out on a journey, not wanting to fall off uh, either way. Um, so this is the fool, and this is the beginning of that journey. Although she's been married for a little bit now. The challenge to that, then, uh, with this ace of cups, is, you know, compassion, emotion, uh, really heartfelt, uh, important uh, things that go right to your uh, your feelings. So this is a great big uh, fountain of compassion. And uh, I kind of love that. I don't know what more this says about uh, that, but it is the challenge uh, to this uh, journey. The challenge to this uh, new start is uh, this uh, compassion. The base of this reading then with this Three of Cups, you know, the Three of Cups are celebrations. Again, it's passionate, emotion, and the Three of Cups are, are just fully involved. And these are nice, big, deep cups set in, in, a, in an emotional setting. So that seems to portend pretty well emotionally for the relationship. The past of this reading, then, 
with this uh, Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. So Pentacles are worth or value. They can be money. This Knight of Pentacles, uh, and the Knight represent. You know, I, I always tell you, this Knight is going to fight for the remit he's been giving. And in this case, the, the, this Knight has been told, this is valuable. I need you to go out and make it work. So this could be a couple things. This could be Princess Beatrice's uh, um, feeling towards this, this marriage. This could be her husband, as a matter of fact. Um, so that is all good, whichever it is. In the sky of this reading for whether her marriage will be successful is this Ace of Swords. And the um, Swords of Truth, uh, Justice, Rules, Law, Ace of Swords is a great big uh, offering of that. And this is a very imposing scythe, I guess you would call it. But this sword, um, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, those things are important to her in this marriage. Those are the things that are important to her. I think those are going to be the guiding principles that determine uh, for her whether this marriage uh, continues at some point in the marriage. If there's a conflict, I think that's what's going to be what determines uh, how it goes forward. And then the uh, likely outcome for the first part of this, ah, being the Hierophant, and that's the government. Like, or this is, the stru this is a structure that you live by. So this is very interesting. Very, very interesting. So the question is, will her marriage be successful? This is the fool starting out on a new journey. This is a big offer. And we got a couple of aces here. Big offer of compassion for that. So it comes with a lot of emotion. And uh, if you can go into this thing with a lot of love, which is what emotion is after all, and this is a big offering of that, that's all good. Uh, the base of the thing is, on is based on celebrations. This Three of Cups, emotional, compassionate, wonderful, flooded with uh, emotion celebrations. This uh, night of value uh, seems to be a very strong underpinning for this. And then if, if she's aiming for this uh, Ace of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law, and then in the end we have this uh, uh, Hierophant, which is the structure of a marriage, these are all very solid cards um, that I would say, yes, I think this is going to be a very strong union between her and her husband. And now watch, they'll probably get divorced next month just because I said that. And then the... Uh, the last part of this, um, so I wanted to know this, if her marriage will be successful. And in this one, I'm going to ask, what would, what would be something that we all want to know about Beatrice? Does, does, does Beatrice, I've got to shuffle these cards up because I'm going to change this direction a little bit. Does Beatrice, Beatrice respect her father? Does Beatrice respect her father? Does Beatrice respect her father four cards start off with the very self of that question does she respect her father well this is interesting so this is the king of wands this is the king of plans of motions of actions getting something done this is a kind of a sorrowful king though look at the, the expression in his face i think that's kind of how she sees her dad you know most little girls look up to their father and maybe she's seeing him as some sort of a man of action uh, regardless of how we see him or what the truth is, maybe that's how a little girl sees her dad. And look at this dad. He seems a little sorrowful about that, doesn't he? The uh, environment that that's in, however, whether she respects her dad, is this um, the three of the major arcana. And this is the uh, empress. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say this is her mother. I think she um, sees her parents in this very um, strong way. It's very interesting. The uh, hopes and the fears for this um, is this four of pentacles. And the four of pentacles is trying to hold on to your value. Again, we see this kind of an old man uh, leaning on his uh, staff here, uh, looking up. At, look at these. These are these make you think of little girls things and, uh, and looking very weary. So the hopes and the fears, I think, um, is that uh, her father is able to hold on to his value which seems that may be a little uh, too late for that. And then the final outcome for all of this, whether she uh, uh, respects her father, is this four of wands, small celebrations. You know, this to me looks like a father and son in a little boat out on an, ad an outing. And this could represent a father and his child. Uh, and so I think the celebrations that this uh, family is going to have left with are those family celebrations, those personal moments that they can build their memories on uh, out of the public's eye. That's interesting. So that for me, I don't know where to put this to tell you the truth. I guess I'll just put it here. 
that to me uh, says that she may uh, recognize that this is what she's going to have to base her family memories on from this point forward. Interesting. So what little I know about Beatrice, I like her. I mean, look at the uh, gene pool she was dealt, and she seems to be doing really well. And um, I think she's someone who we can respect. I hope the cards, um, you know, I hope I got it right. What do you think? Did I get it right? Tell me what, what your idea is. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.